It's cold out here. The earth is frozen in hibernation. Everything is still. Barren. Brown. I heard that over 400 different plants make their home here. Does Chelmsia flexuosa sound so exotic? Much more than common hair grass. This is the only place in the whole county it lives. Why does this park feel so foreign? A.D. Taylor once said, there was very little plant material of any value in the park. Forty years earlier, Harriet Keeler had argued for such wild flowers and weeds. They must, of course, die with our forest. There is no reason why they might not be coaxed back into our parks. If a bit of woodland were left absolutely untouched, there is no reason why they should not grow and flourish within the precincts of our city. But as is often the case, both woman and plant found themselves subservient to me. Botany was the informal study of plants by women. While landscaping and the creation of parks was the territory of men promoting a harmonious social order. designed this park with the belief that beautification would create moral and civic virtue amongst the urban populations. The design of the park would subconsciously relax us into submission. Are we there yet? We cannot escape history. It will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. Up here you can see almost all of East Cleveland. beliefs are said to be formed by imaginary relationships with the real conditions of existence. Once, women would walk down East Cleveland streets freely, following and harassing men, verbally expressing their desires that only men could fulfill. Their desires were not bodily but rather the freedom to vote. I've been thinking about freedom, a fleeting, finite thing that always escapes us.
women found freedom in parks at the turn of the century. The tamed outdoors were just an extension of domesticity outwards. The morality of womanhood was to be found in the company of romantic visions of the picturesque landscapes. Undefined paths meant to evoke classical paintings. The foreground of the ornamental, a middle ground of parkland, and a background that's wild. These paths are not the perimeter, but an aperture. A space through which the world can be seen. Harriet saw a different world. One caught in the act of becoming. Speaking into darkness with little hope of response. She and her sisters engaged in a desperate struggle for freedom. Leaving behind the false humanity of frills and purplos and created a true an accomplishment. The trees here must hold such stories. They are older than the city itself. Most of them are too big to wrap your arms around, too big to be known by human skin. Ragged with time, weighed down by history, Rockefeller used to own this place. He came here every summer for almost 30 years. Once his wife died, he never returned. We are following the course of an old stream they put underground when they started building this park. was an old quarry of blue stone. Carved out of the earth, it left a deep scar. A gaping wound, the tailor attempted to bandage. You can still feel its presence if you concentrate hard enough. is starting to heal, starting to swallow Taylor's structured walks. Many used to walk.
Vito followed people, stalked them. Sophie reversed the roles. Janet truly understood walking is much more than a relationship to others. One foot is moving into the future while the other is in the past. Our bodies stuck in the middle. The hard part is being present, really being here, really being alive. <laughs>